Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. September is the harvest month, so I have two simple harvest projects for you. Let's get into it. I have here a piece of plywood from my wood pile. Measures 20 inches by 7. Thought this would be perfect for a monochromatic harvest market sign. No fuss. I've cut my stencil from vinyl so I get that adhered. I've been wanting to try this technique to see if it would work the way I imagined. Using Joe Sonia texture paste, I'll fill in my letters with the hope that I'll get a 3D thing going on. This paste gives extra body to your paint and I really should have mixed it with a paint color, but at the time I was on the fence about which color I was going to be using. I'll stir it up a bit and smear it on with my craft stick, covering up those letters. I want it just thick enough for some texture, not so thick that it'll get jacked up when I remove the vinyl. I smooth it a wee bit with my craft stick, remove some of that extra paste, waste not, want not, as they say. And then I'm going to let that set up for a moment. Then, very carefully, I'll pull up the vinyl. I'm going to speed this up for time's sake, but I went very slowly. So, I'm participating in the What Month is a Challenge, hosted by Sweet Tammy of Happiness Created. This month's co-hosts are Shawnee of Glitzy Stitches and Ellie of DIY from House to Home. Our special guest host is the awesome Anna Lee of Anna Lee Ashby. Very talented sweet ladies. You'll find links to their channels as well as the playlist in the description box. Taking my time, as you can see, the vinyl was tearing as I was pulling, so I had to employ my vinyl pick. It took some patience. It is a bit messy, too. I have a trash bag next to me to minimize the moss. This part here was a bit of a shot in the dark. Trying to find the center of the A without smearing the paste was a task. Doing a little touch up there. Right, so I let it dry for about 20 minutes, then came in and added the pumpkin, and I'll add lines on both sides using painter's tape. The green tape is my guide. I'll flank it top and bottom with blue painter's tape. I'll remove the green tape and I'll use a piece of that to mask off the end for a clean, even finish on the end of that line. I fill it in just as I did the lettering and I'll peel up the tape which was significantly easier than the lettering. See, look at that, so much easier. And that's given me a nice clean line. I'm gonna let this sit for probably about an hour until it's good and dry. I decided to base coat the sign with Americana Honey Brown. I chose this color because I've used it along with charcoal gray and my fall decor for the past two years, and I kind of dig it, so I gave it two coats. I dry brush with ceram coat charcoal, starting in the corners and along the edges to distress it a bit. And then I'm moving over the lettering, and while I like it, it's not what I had in my head. It's just not doing it for me. So, I decided to stain it with folk art antiquing medium. Okay, still not what I had envisioned, but adding some interest. Not loving it, yet not hating it either. Ambivalence. Ambivalence is what is happening, but I press on. Still feeling eh about it, 
I decided to try some Josonia white pickling, which I love. However, not so much in this case. Here, I'm considering painting it charcoal, which was my original intention, but before throwing in the tail, I decide to give it a light sanding. I'm liking it a wee bit better, but still not there yet. This project was like doing a cha-cha. One step up, two steps back, two steps up, one step back. So I came back with a bit more dry brushing with charcoal. And then after that, I put it aside and I slept on it. So it's growing on me. We'll see how I feel about it in a week from now. Let me know what you think. DIY number two is this cute wee crate. I grabbed this for a fiver at Target. It has legs, but I'll keep those for another project. I've added my stencil and I'll add the texture paste, same as the sign, including these cute wee pumpkins on the side. So I'm just repeating the same process. The weeding was definitely the most difficult part. I was afraid if I left it dry solid that when I removed the um, vinyl, the whole piece would come up and detach from the box. I was surprised how easily the pumpkin stencil came off. So I'm just going to clean up that smear with a paintbrush. And this time I base coat the entire thing with ceramic coat charcoal. I wanted to see if reversing the colors would look more like what I had in my head. I'm dry brushing with honey brown again, starting in the corners. I def like this better, but I'm thinking I should have applied maybe a thicker layer of the paste here so it would have more texture for the dry brushing to catch. I do actually like this a lot better. I really like the pumpkins. This is much more of what I had in mind. This pumpkin is really bringing it. Really digging the way this side turned out. I also dry brush the back for consistency. There's a small channel on the long side of both the front and back of the crate. So I paint that with honey brown too. As always, I spray both projects with clear matte sealer. Let me know what you think of these projects. Cha cha cha. I made the pumpkins two years ago. They're just Dollar Tree pumpkins that I painted with charcoal and honey brown. I love them. Thank you, Tammy, for hosting, and Shawnee and Ellie for co hosting. Special thanks to Anna Lee for guest hosting. Please check out their channels as well as the playlist for fun tips and inspiration. You'll find the links in the description box along with the list of my supplies. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe and all that good stuff. I'll have more Halloween fun in my next video. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.